what's the purpose of all this? Because unfortunately, a lot of us are waking up without purpose. Well, how do we know? There's so much sadness going on, so much fear. So much that they feel that they really need things outside of them to feel happy and whole. I need a relationship to feel love. I need money to feel abundant. I need success to feel worthy. But Allah has quite simply said in the Holy Quran, وَلَكَدْ كَرَمْنَ بَنِي Adam. We've honored you. You have the nur of the Prophet in your life. You're honored. So the question is, what are you going to do about it now? So Allah says, you don't need anything outside of you. So if I asked the brother in front of me, said, here's a million dollars. You know, it's a funny thing. They ask somebody, whatever you want, we'll give you. You know what the number one response is? You know what it is? A million dollars. That's it. That's the most. When they ask people out of 100, 95 to 98 people say, I want a million dollars. It's our limited thinking. A million dollars can't do much. Try to go build an orphanage in Iraq with a million dollars. But that's the way you've been primed to think. And then if I tell you I'll give you a million dollars, but you can't wake up tomorrow, would you take it? Say no. So Allah says, then why are you going after these things? Allah says, call on me. And with that, I want to say Assalamu alaikum with every Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So Allah says, call on me and I'll answer you. So I've been on this journey for the past five to six years through the Holy Quran of how do you qualify as a caller where I don't need money, I don't need a relationship, I don't need anything but Allah. Well, the first rule you have to know is Tawheed. Tawheed says we're all manifestations of Allah and there's no separation between me and you. We're all connected to Source. And we're in this dimension right now to get closer to Him. But anything that you do, anything you see is just a manifestation of Allah. So imagine if I show you a mirror and through that mirror you see a mountain, you see a palace, you see birds, you see everything through this mirror. Would you ever say that the mirror is amazing for creating the birds, the mountains, and the good people? No. The mirror is just a reflection. That's you. You're just a reflection of Allah. And any good that you do is only because you're reflecting Allah's names. So then all you need is to be able to reflect God's names. So if you look at all of God's names, those are things that you want. You want wealth? That's God's name. You want respect? That's God's name. You want honor? That's God's name. You want health? That's God's name. Anything that you want is within God's name. Everything. But unfortunately, we're looking right now, especially now in today's society, everywhere else but in Allah's names. So we have a book. So the, the topic is how do you make time for the Holy Quran? The first thing that you have to do is do you believe that the Quran is the Word of God? Text, take out your phones. We're doing a meditation today too. So I don't give a traditional lecture. Everybody take out a phone. Think of somebody that you care about, a religious person, and ask them a simple question. How do you know the Quran is the Word of God? Ask them that question and then shut your phone. I want to know the responses. I'll give you 10 seconds to do it. Send it to anybody. How do you know that the Holy Quran is the Word of God? Because if you truly believed it was the Word of God, then why do so many people leave it? And when do you usually hear the Holy Quran being played? At the mosque? When does it get played at your house? When somebody dies, is that it? The reason why we don't take it to heart is because we still lack belief in the Holy Quran. And that was my journey in life. Back 20 years ago, I decided to wanting to get closer to Allah. I was handed a Quran 
said, how do I know this is a different word of God than the Bible or the Torah and all the other books? So I went on an interesting journey. I said, God, if you're in this book, show me you. I want to see you. And subhanAllah, every time I go into the Quran, Allah shows me something different. It's been a never-ending journey. So let me give you just some facts about the Holy Quran. It's the only book in the world where God is the only author. There's no other book. You know, that's the only book in the world where God is speaking to you and nobody else is speaking. Prophets are not speaking. Other human beings are not speaking. The only author that's speaking in the Holy Quran is Allah. In the Bible, are other people speaking? Yes or no? Yes. Everybody's speaking in the Bible. Everybody threw their two cents in. So that's why that book became corrupted. Where Allah says, I'm going to protect this last one. So then I said, Allah, show me. You know, now we could do Google chats or Google search lookups. How many times does it say like the word life? 88 times. Could anybody guess how many times it says the word death? 88 times. How did the prophet who never wrote down any words where things are revealed have the same amount of times it says life versus death? How many times does it say shaitan? The same amount of times it says I seek protection from shaitan. Good deeds, bad deeds, same amount of time. Guess how many times they use the word month? Twelve. How many times does he use the word day, singular? 365. How many? T I could go on and on and on. So how did the Prophet of Islam, who nobody ever taught him how to write, bring down a revelation where we just found this out? And this was the journey I was on. And I found over a hundred of these scientific miracles, but I said, Allah, okay, you are, this is the word of God. And the closest manifestation we have to Allah is not the Holy Prophet. It's not. It's not the angels. Guess what it is? The Quran. That's the closest thing we have to Allah. So if you believe it's the Word of God, now can I make you believe it? No. You have to pick it up and say, Allah, show me you in this book. Because anytime Allah says you call on me, Allah answers you. You know what our problem is? You know why we don't wake up for Fajr? Because imagine if I, you wake up for Fajr, and whoever you talk to, whatever wish you want, he's going to give it to you. So you wake up and you wanted a hamburger. Just to test it out, you get a hamburger. Then you wake up towards the same guy and you ask for $1,000, you get $1,000. Then you ask for a Lamborghini, you get a Lamborghini. Would you ever miss a day of waking up? Never. So the Quran is telling you, have an experience with it. It's not, a, 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 we're not a religion where it's a noun. We're being, a, where Islam is a noun. It's a verb. It's an action. Allah wants you to go through experiences. And we're all one experience away from getting closer to Allah. Pharaoh. Who did Pharaoh go and use to go against Prophet Musa? Which people? The magicians. They were promised fame. They were promised money. They were promised gratification. Just like now we're promised in this world. You go on Instagram, do this and you'll be happy. Go to schools now, do this and you'll be happy. You feel this way, well you'll be happy if you keep going through this. So we've completely become animals. And now the West has told us, well this is the law now. Don't judge the person, this is the way they feel. So if somebody feels like they want to wake up and be a cat today, then they're a cat. Why? Because I felt like it. Where Islam says you're all animals trying to be human beings. How do you be a human being? When you try to think greater than the way you feel. Right now, the West is completely dependent on feelings. This is why we have all these gender issues. It's all feeling dependent. So Allah says, no, don't be followed by that. You'll be lost and confused. Come to me, ask me. Because if you ask anybody else, they may confuse you. They may lose you. There is a sister. This is how much I believe in this. 
I teach meditation. I do a lot of therapy. I'm big in CBT therapy. But my biggest thing is getting people to ask Allah. But can you ask Allah from the ego? Or does it have to be from the heart? From the heart. And anytime you pray from the heart, Allah answers. Don't people go to Imam Ridha salam, who are paralyzed and blind or got cancer or can't have babies or going through depression, depression or divorce and they go to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, shrine or they go to Imam Ridha and what happens? Don't they become healed? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because they qualified as a caller. They asked Allah. There was a sister. I go and hang out at this coffee place where I do a lot of my work and there's a sister that I noticed is always angry with her mom so every time she was angry I said Allah she doesn't see you because there's three ways to overcome things the first way is what are you putting your attention on what's suffering you go through pain we're all gonna go through pain what's suffering suffering is when you put the attention on who yourself a believer in God, whenever they go through pain, where do they put their attention on? Allah. Say, Allah, I'm going through this pain. Remove it, please. What do we do? We become victims. I'm suffering. Then we tell 42 other people that you're suffering. And now you feel better about yourself. Because now everybody else is suffering because of the same story that you told. So she was like that. Said, Allah, she's far away. Allow her to see you all, Allah. So I was reading about how, do you guys know what pH levels in water is? The best pH level is 7. So they did a Harvard study where people just closed their eyes, prayed to change the pH level. It's a Harvard study. Guess what? The, the pH level of the water was 7.9. They got it down within 6 minutes, that's all it took, to 7.2, and nobody touched the water. All they did is they put their hands and they imagined the water going down. The Imams say, pray as if it's already there. When you open the door, it's there. Allah says, call on me, I answer you. So, he, so I said, you know what? I'm going to try it. I closed my eyes and I said, I'm going to think of my wife. So I texted my wife. I said, what were you thinking of? Because don't the Imams say, be careful if you think bad about somebody because they will think bad about you and think good about people because then they'll think good about why because I told you we're all connected there's no separation so I texted my wife said what are you thinking about she says that's so weird I was I was tutoring my daughter and then I was gonna then I just started thinking about you and then you texted me so I said nobody will believe me so that same sister that was suffering I said hey can you go think of your friend and then text her to see if she was thinking of you. So she said, sure. She was thinking of her friend. She texted her. She did the meditation. I told her, have God see if she can think about you. Just ask him. And if your vibrations match, then there'll be a connection. Now we're talking about quantum physics, which is the realest physics out there. So she went, she did it. She texted her. She said, that's so weird. I was just about to send you a picture. So then I said, you know what? Everybody's going to be skeptical. We're all skeptics. I said, can you go and think of a fruit? Think of a fruit that she would like to eat. So go meditate and imagine her eating a fruit. The same way if you're single and you want to get married, imagine the type of person and the character that you want to be married to. Don't move until your body convinces it. You're going through a marriage, through a hardship, don't get divorced. Islam says, be patient, but close and pray to Allah. Sit still and say, how should my husband be for me to be this way? So what are the things I got to change? Close your eyes and pray over that. Then Allah says in the Quran, we give you unexpected changes. Imam Khomeini says, when you do that, Allah could change the heart of that individual within a day. But we're so quick to give up. 50, 60% divorce rate in our community. Why? Nobody wants to feel uncomfortable anymore. The only way to get closer to Allah is to be uncomfortable. How? The Prophet suffered the most. You know, for your kids to grow, the only way to grow is for them to do dangerous things carefully. Now, because of fear, 
sit at home, here's an iPad, go into this direction. Well, look at the study as I know and what's happening to our kids from that direction. And now they're suppressing their emotions. They can't express themselves because of everybody's fear. Do you know what's the leading cause of cancer and disease? Suppressed emotions in children where they have to take care of their parents' emotions before they take care of them. That's a leading indicator of cancer and disease. Study Lou, De Lou Gehrig disease. Lou Gehrig was a famous baseball player. He never missed the day. His father was a drunk, so he took care of his mom's emotional needs and was always there. And he never missed a day of baseball. He had the record for a long time. He took care of everybody else but who? Himself. Well, Allah says, no, you don't jump off of your ship to help somebody else's ship if your ship is sinking. Take care of yourself. Take hisab. Where are you on the journey of Allah? And we don't do that. That's why in Surah Yasin, the Prophet came as a messenger. And Allah says, come, warn these people because they haven't been warned in a long time. They're all worshipping idols. Warn them. So the Prophet came. He went amongst the worst people and warned them, why are you following these idols? There was the idol of money, the idol of health. And some, the second caliph would laugh with his companions when they became Muslims. They said, when nobody was looking, we would eat God. We would eat dates. But right now we're following the same gods. How do we know? More people will, bear, will, wear, will watch American Idol before we pick up the Holy Quran. So our challenge is to make it an experience. So that girl was a skeptic. She's like, that was a coincidence. I said, go and think of her eating a fruit. Just imagine her eating a fruit. She said, sure. So she went for five minutes, came back. I said, text her. What fruit, if any fruit you could eat, would you? Because she was thinking about strawberries. She says, it's funny you say that because I'm eating strawberries right now. So she goes, oh my God, this works. I said, so should you start paying attention to the way you talk to yourself? Because if you can connect to your friend, how about how are you talking to yourself? What are the things that you say to yourself today? I'm so tired. I hate my job. My kids will never listen to me. I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to lose weight. Well, guess what? If you say that, it's going to be true for the next 50 years because that's what you're telling your body. You know, in Islam, you shouldn't even say, I want. I want a car. I want a good relationship. What does Islam say? You're already it. Why would you want it? So you tell the body that you're already it. You close your eyes. That's why the Imams say when you pray, imagine when you open the door, it's right there for you. You're no longer in need. You're no longer in lack. When do we get in trouble? We're in lack. I need something. I feel pain. So we get in relationships because we don't feel love. Those relationships end up hurting us so much. So look at the magicians. The magicians of Musa, salam, that were against them. They were promised everything. But then they had an experience. Just like that sister had an experience. And I said, if you start changing the way you talk about your mom, do you think your mom will change the way she talks about you? I said, if you can think of strawberries and your friend is eating strawberries, why don't you try that for 30 days? Think of anybody you're talking negative about. Because if you don't, the Imam says that curse comes back on you. That's why it's not good to curse people. Who are the only people you're allowed to curse? The people that Allah tells you to curse. Are you allowed to curse that person that cut you off 10 minutes ago? Are you allowed to curse that poor waitress that burned your food? Or your wife that didn't make you what you want. We curse everybody when we're unhappy. When we're in pain. But what happens And that curse gets thrown back at you? Do you know if you just look bad at that individual who cut you off. And you think a bad thought. Do you know that bad thought comes right back at you? And now you've given something, a bad karma to you for the rest of your day? Why can't you just look at that person that cut you off and give them an excuse and say maybe he had a bad day? Maybe his wife just cheated on him. Maybe his kid just died. But why does it take for us to know that to give him an excuse? What's wrong with us being forgiving and giving? What happened to us? As soon as somebody falls that's on a pedestal, 
We all gossip and talk about it. Do you know how many enemies this mosque has? Oh, he's going to build a bigger mosque? Instead of promoting and saying we're losing thousands of our kids to these schools, that we're going to be creating environments. I'm proud when one of the students from WISE starts with the Holy Quran. I'm proud when they all graduate with scholarships. I'm proud when they come and pray every day. We don't value that anymore. Why? We don't value the Quran. So the Holy Quran says you could have an instant change. You don't have to do 25 days of a habit. You don't got to wait six months. It could be instant. What happened? They saw that Prophet Musa was, was able to turn a stick into a snake. And they realized that's God. They had an experience. You could have that experience eyes open or eyes closed. In a meditation or asleep. It could be anywhere at any time. But you have to be willing to receive. You know they took two groups of people. Housekeepers. They say you know by you cleaning this hotel you will lose weight because you're doing another, enough physical energy, another, enough physical movement. The other group, they told them nothing. Everything stayed the same. In one month, that group that was told that doing housekeeping work benefits you lost an average of 6% body fat or 6 pounds. What changed? What's the only thing that changed? Their beliefs towards that occupation that's it right now you know why we don't wake up in the morning and ask Allah because we don't believe in it so Allah says be careful then the dunya will get to you and then in Surah Yasin it says you'll have shackles around your neck this was the people during the Prophet's time these are the people that went to war against the Prophet when he said get rid of these idols get rid of this bad behavior just like now, people are coming to tell you, stop this, you will not be happy. It's impossible. They didn't. So Allah says there will be shackles around your neck. The real shackles will come right when you die. But there will be shackles. Why shackles around your neck? Because what's one thing you cannot do when there's shackles around the neck? You can look everywhere but at yourself. It says you're no longer. And when that happens, you become arrogant. You start thinking you're perfect. And what happens with arrogance? You have somebody who's good in front of you, a good wife, good kids, you'll think they're bad because of your arrogance. And your bad qualities, you'll think they're good. We had a former president, Donald Trump, that was like that. He truly believed he was good in saving the world, even though he was killing Muslims on the other side of the world. Salawat. So in the Quran, the magicians came. They saw the miracle. So how do you know you're a believer? What's the difference between an amateur and a pro? A pro goes and does the work and practice even when he doesn't want to. We need to become pros. That just because today you don't feel like praying, you go and do it anyway. Why? Because Allah says, I created you. You go to the gym every day, you want to get buff to get rid of physical illness. Yes? Correct? To keep yourself healthy. So do you know physical pain and defects is painful? Do you know what's a thousand times more painful? Defects of the soul. But right now you don't feel them. Why? Because you're so closely attached to this body. What happens right when you die? The pain comes. You say, oh my God. This is why I needed to pray. This is why I needed to be patient. This is why I needed to pray on time. Because now everything manifested itself. You're like, oh, this was so important. We don't believe in that. We say Allah will forgive us. Allah says, you take yourself to hell. So as soon as the magician seen this, Faraon says, what are you doing? He says, we bow down. Who are you bowing down to? To the Lord of Musa and Harun. Salam says, I will kill you. Allah says, we, they're going to threaten you to give up this hijab. Right now, girls are taking off the hijab. What's happening? They go on Instagram. 
Guess what's happening? They're being celebrated. Congratulations. Brothers get girlfriends. They get celebrated. Congratulations. Well, look at the magicians who were against Prophet Musa in one instant changed. One instant. And they said, I'm the Lord of pegs. I will chop off your opposite limbs and put you on a peg alive. Guess what they said? Said you could only torture us for so long because this body will go, but our soul is with Rabbi, with the, the rub of Prophet Musa. That is faith. They didn't choose to suffer and point at themselves. There's a sister here. She was told, you have six months to live. She's here. This was 10 years ago. This is why faith is so important. Plane starts falling. Who's the only person you're going to go to? Allah. What if somebody points at you and a doctor tells you you have six months to live? Or somebody comes and tells you some bad news. What's the first thing that we do when somebody tells us that? We put the blame, we put the attention on ourselves. What did she do? She said, Alhamdulillah, this is a trial from you, Allah. But I'm not going to listen to this doctor. You're not my Lord. So where did she put her attention? On Allah. What meaning did she give it? If somebody told you you have six months to live, share with the person next to you, what meaning would you give that? Go ahead, take 10 seconds. What are the emotions that would come out? You have six months to live. And you now have cancer. And you can't move and you're in pain. What is the emotions you're going to feel? Brothers in the back, scream it out. What's something you're going to feel? You're going to feel bad. What else? Sad. Anger. Helpless. What happens when your body, you tell it you have fear, helplessness, anger? What happens to the body's immune system? It shuts down, then you die. See, whenever something bad happens to us, you have two ways of looking at it. Allah is conspiring for you, or Allah is conspiring against us. What do the disbelievers say? Oh, God is this conspiring against us. Why would God allow this to happen? Why would God allow my child to go back to Allah? Why would, my, why would Allah allow me to get fired from my job today? Why would Allah allow my wife to die today? We all blame. Do you know why Allah allows this? Because that father, he forgot to tell himself he's not a father. Anything that changes is not who you are. You're not this body. The, 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 the husband forgot he's not a husband. Because what happened when his wife went away? That person that was a doctor that got fired, he forgot that he's not a doctor. Then what is he? See, we get too closely attached to these labels. You're just consciousness going back to Allah. That's it. What do they say? When musibah hits, when difficulty hits, inna, wa inna, we go from Allah, we come back. What trouble? What are you going to tell me? I have cancer? I have six months to live? What's the meaning that sister gave it? Hope. In who? Allah. And then the third thing, what is she going to do about it? And she decided to focus only on Allah. Where the doctors would look at her strange, like looking at her, how are you alive? How would you do this? We have people like that in our lives. We have friends. We're trying to become successful. They're looking at you. We keep negating you. We keep talking bad about you and you're still standing? How? You're still married? You still have kids that come running to you? How? We want, we're waiting for you to collapse. That's what the world has become like. So if you don't hold on to the Holy Quran, it doesn't work. So look at the first ayahs of Surah Bakra. How do you get the Quran to infiltrate you? Look at the first ayahs. Allah says, This is a book 
of which there's no doubt, guidance for those that are conscious of Allah. So if you're not aware of Allah, will this book guide you? If you're shaitan, will it guide you? If you cheat people, will it guide you? If you abuse your wife, will it guide you? If you do haram things, will it guide you? No. Allah says very clearly, you have to be aware of me. Who are the people that are aware? They believe in the unseen. So you have to believe that if you think of something, and you ask Allah for help, and you believe in it and you pray, it will come to you. You don't have to go to it. You have to believe in Allah. You also have to believe in shaitan. Can you see shaitan? No, but you have to believe in him and seek refuge from shaitan. They establish prayer. So the first is believe in the unseen. Then they have to pray. Brother asked me today, some days I miss duhr and asr. And I feel guilty after. He works out. I said, do you work out every day? He said, yeah. I said, do you miss? He said, no. I said, why? He says, I have a vision. I said, I have the same vision with Allah. Allah says that you were created where there's a time you weren't worthy of being mentioned. If I ask this young brother, how are your kids? You'd say, what kids? I just, I don't, I'm not even married. Right now, your kids are not even worthy of being mentioned. Allah says, be grateful that I've given you this existence. So Allah says, how do you get more in life? You want more money? Everybody's trying to create the next Uber idea or the next YouTube video or the next eBay business. What's the fastest way of getting more money? Fastest way. Allah says it. Be grateful. Did you tell your parents today I'm great, you're grateful for them? Did you tell your husband today you're grateful for him, for his hard work? Even if he's angry at you, even if he yelled at you, were you able to hug him? Because if he yelled at you, he's just telling you he's in pain. If somebody cuts you off and beeps, they're telling you they're in pain, they need love. What do we do? We respond to somebody who acts small. So that makes us what? Small. Allah says, be grateful and you can't be angry. Try it. I dare you. Go and tell your mom, I love you so much. I I, or tell your mom, I hate you so much. You can't be grateful and angry at the same time. Anger is not the opposite of love. It's not the opposite of Allah. It's the separation of it. Why can't we give people excuses? So Allah says, pray. Ask me. Have that experience like the magicians. Allah says, look how many miracles in the Holy Quran. Do you know you can get direct revelation from Allah that are not prophets? It's in the Quran. Was Mary, Mother Mary, alayhi salam, a prophet? Did she get... How about her mother? Was she a prophet? How about the people of the cave? Were they prophets? But did Allah give them wisdom? Why don't you try to sit on the prayer mat for 20 minutes and see if Allah gives you a sign that leaves no doubt and Allah says, we give you something unexpected, something new. Why does it have to be new? You want to change in your life, right? You want your relationships to be better. The value of your life is dependent on the value of your relationships. Your five closest people, how do you behave with them? If you're sneaky and go behind their back, you will attract somebody who's going to be sneaky and go behind your back. Look at our community. Everybody's dating. All these high school kids... Star, Dearborn High, Crestwood, Fortson. Majority of these kids are dating. I meet with them. I counsel. You know a question that I asked them? I said, no problem. Keep dating. How many of them do their parents know? Guess what they all say? I've never said where par- they told me parents know. They all say they all do it behind their parents' back. Good. Look at the ungratefulness. Who takes care of that child when they were six months years old in the crib and they needed their diaper changed? And they woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning every day. If I woke you up at 2 o'clock in the morning every day, you throw your pillow at me. But now you've gotten older. You see a boy who likes you. The boy says, let's date. You didn't anticipate the problem because you were ungrateful and all you cared about was this body that somebody told you a nice comment. And you confuse that for love. That's an egoic love. That's not divine love. But you forgot to think, this boy is speaking to you behind your mom's back and behind who else's back? His mom. And if he's willing to betray his own mom to speak to you, 
What do you think he'll do one day, 10 years from now, after you marry him? He'll go behind whose back? Your back. Why do we have so much cheating in the community? Because of this habit. What's the number one issue in this community when it goes to marriage counseling? Temporary marriage with married men. Number one issue. Nobody speaks about it. Why? We forgot about Allah. Why? We forgot to be grateful for the people that love us the most. Think of their five people that you love the most, the closest. How do you treat them? How can you improve that relationship? So Allah says, you want it to reach your heart? Believe in the unseen. Speak to me, Allah says, and tell me to show you a sign that leaves no doubt that it's you. A brother was debating me. There was, we, we did this meditation two weeks at WISE. We do a program on Wednesday. And the brother says, he was, he was a skeptic. He was an analytical person. Says, this doesn't work, but I'm going to try. I'm going to think of the next person next to me, of him drinking coffee. So for five minutes, he kept thinking about coffee and the person drinking coffee. Then it's time for them to share. So he hit him on the side. Hey, what were you thinking of? He says, man, all I could kept thinking about was coffee. Then he goes to my sister. He says, oh my God, this is dynamite. I didn't realize that we're all this connected to each other. That Allah works this way. You know why we don't believe it? Because we haven't experienced it for ourselves. So Allah says, go experience. Ask me for something. Think of it. Do Ziyarat Ashura for 30 days. For 40 days. Ask for something through that. Watch what happens after 40 days. We doubt it. So Allah says this. Believe in the unseen. Establish prayer. Spend your money. You know abundant people? They don't care if they go broke. Because they're abundant, they're going to attract so much money. Didn't the Imam spend all their wealth? Did they ever feel lack? And didn't they become abundant again and spend all their wealth again? You know when the Imam returns? You know, everybody's going to be wealthy. Nobody's going to be working for money. Everybody. And people are going to doubt it and save it. And the Imam would give them more money. He says, you're abundant. You don't need this. We have a lack, thinking, I need this, and I got to hold on to it. Allah says, be grateful and spend it. Guess what Allah will do? He'll times it by 70. He'll times it by 700. It's in the Holy Quran. Read it. Give that a try. There was once, we were doing a youth group, and a brother dropped $2. So I gave him $20 back. And I gave him in the eye in the Quran, when you do a good deed, Allah returns it 10 times. So I said, here's $2, here's $20 in return. He was so happy. Next week, all the youth came to me. Brother, I found a dollar. Brother, I found $3. I said, no, it doesn't work like that. There's no virtue through vice. So Allah says, believe in the unseen. Establish prayer. Spend. Give. When's the last time you've given without a string attached? When's the last time you went? Even if you see people on the street, Islamically, give them a dollar. Give, don't ignore them. It's not good. Even if they, they have a sign out, give them something. You don't know. Imam Ali says, what if that dollar you give him changes his heart? That person that you saw sin yesterday, how do you know overnight he didn't ask for forgiveness? Do you know I deal with women in the community who sell their body to men? They sell it. They come to me. What do we do? I've completely lost my soul. Do you know what I do? I show them the eye of the Quran that when you do tawbah, Allah forgives you for all your sins. So don't you think Allah's going to forgive you? But you have to ask yourself, Oh Allah, I want to change. So that means those people that are closest to me, how am I treating them? How do you treat your kids? Did you yell at them today? Under the age of seven, don't yell at them. Let them express. If they suppress their emotions, that's the leading cause of cancer and disease. I can prove it to you scientifically. Be very careful of yelling. Be very careful of suppressing your wife, confiding her, hurting her, causes cancer and disease. It kills your emotional system, which also kills your immune system. Salawat. We'll end. We're going to do the bonfire. I'll just finish these ayahs. So who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, spend of what was provided for them, and who would believe the revelation, and believed in the hereafter. 
in the Holy Quran, who are the people that don't believe in the hereafter? In Surah Ma'un, They don't take care of orphans and they don't help the poor. So what you do in life, you don't say I want to be a doctor. You don't say I want to be a lawyer. Why? 60 to 50% of them are divorced. The greatest failure is when you achieve success in something and it doesn't make you happy. How many people that you know are doctors and lawyers and they have miserable relationships? They come to my office, I meet with them. They're miserable. I don't want that life. That isn't happiness. So how do you avoid that? Say, Allah, I want to be a doctor for you. I want to help people for you. You show me a way. There was a brother who was a kid who saw the Iran-Iraq war. He saw the people with the bloodshed. He said, Allah, I want to help the lovers of Ahl Bayt. I'm going to be a doctor. Do you know what he does now? He's an MD doctor in this country. He finished top of his class. But whenever there's a catastrophe around the world, he goes and helps through this program. Allah gave it to him. Did he have to work for it? Were there days that he didn't want to go and do it? But did he do it anyway? But now he's a pro. So even when you don't want to go, Allah says, come to me. Even if your body's resisting, don't listen to your body. I have a best friend who's an NBA player. He just wrote a book. You should read it. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. It's a life story. He said, in third grade, I knew I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and shoot baskets even if it was raining outside. But every day I would pray, God, I want to get out of the ghetto. I want to buy my mom a brand new house. So guess what? When it was raining, what did he do? He went. When it was hot outside, what did he do? He went. Every day. What would happen if I tell you, let's go outside? You want to become an NBA player? They say, yes. The kid wakes up. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. The mind says NBA. What does the body say? Go back to sleep. It's Fajr time. I tell you, speak, get up. Allah says the special prayers are answered in the morning. Wake up excited. When's the last time you wake up excited? Do you know why most men here over the age and women over the age of 35 don't wake up excited? Do you know why? There's nothing new. It's the same routine. You're watching the same movie. Why don't you wake up in the morning, say, Allah, show something new. Imagine if you watch. What's a famous show that everybody watches now? Give me one, something. What is it? Okay, whatever she said, some Lebanese show. Imagine if it's episodes, but you had to watch episode 8 48 times in a row. You'd be miserable. And you're waiting for the next episode. Allah says, you're waiting for the next episode in your life. Do you know the only reason why you haven't seen the next episode in your life? Because you haven't changed the channel in, in your heart. It's the same frequency. If you go in their car and you listen to the music and you're on a frequency channel, what happens if you don't change the frequency? You get the same radio station. So Allah says there's a frequency, there's a receiver in your body. You change it. You change the way you act, change the way you think, change the way you feel. Allah says, I change everything in front of you. Your kids who ran away from you will run to you. It's in the Holy Quran. Look at this last ayah. So whenever you're about to do something, say, Allah, I want to do this for you. Not because I want to get married or have kids. That means nothing. What if you go get married and have kids and you get hit by a bus and you go back to Allah? That's what your life was for? How many people did you get to pray? Because they came to you and said, you seem so happy. What do you do? And you just tell them, I pray. When's the last time somebody's come to you and says, I want to be like you because you're so fun. When's the last time? Think about it. When's the last time somebody called you and says, I really needed to talk to you? That's how you know you're doing Allah's work. Not if you're praying five times a day. That's secondary. Because if you pray five times a day and people are running away from you, then that prayer has no value. Shimmer prayed. Shimmer fought for the light of Imam Ali. He ended up beheading Imam Hussein. Alayhi salam. So the value of your life is the value of your relationships. How are your relationships? So look what Allah says, and I'll end with this ayah. Allah says, if they would truly believe and observe the Torah, the Gospel, and the Revelations, and the Quran, 
high upon from their sustainer, they would indeed partake of all the blessings of heaven and earth. Some of them do a right course, but most of them don't and follow their own desires. Allah is saying you could follow you could have heaven on earth. Paradise could be on earth. When the imams were on earth, they were on paradise. Their two rakat prayer had more joy than anything you're going to do. We've lost that. We're holding an emotional state of anger and we're suspicious of everybody because I'm not happy. It must be everybody else's fault. So Allah says, stop blaming. This world isn't conspiring against you. Conspire it for you. Try it. Wake up in the morning read a little bit of the Holy Quran, and then pray. And ask Allah to show you a sign. What you will see will be magical. That's why I get so many people to do it. And I can share so many testimonials, but give it a try. So the last secret, another secret in the Holy Quran, and then I'll end. In Surah An-Nuh, Allah says, I'll read the ayahs. But my call has only made them flee more. So whenever I call them, they run away. So they put their fingers in their ears and they don't listen. But look how Allah says, how do you change this about yourself? So you can make this more soothing. Two ways. You ask Allah or you change your habits. You say, I'm going to wake up in the morning. Before I drink my coffee, I'm going to pray and read five minutes of Quran. Before I take care of my kids, I'm going to do two minutes of Quran. Or you say, I'm going to start reading the Quran every morning, but the days that I miss, I got to give a hundred dollars charity. So you punish yourself instantly. So tell the person next to you, what's one new routine you're going to do? A habit stacking routine, before I do this, I'm going to read Quran, or I'm going to read the Quran, but if I miss, I'm going to give twenty dollars. This is all you need. This is the closest thing you have to Allah. Why are you going anywhere else? It's here. This is all that you need. Everything you need is in the Holy Quran. So tell the person next to you, what's one promise that you're going to make? And we'll end with this meditation. Go ahead. I'm going to start with the adults. I'm going to see what they're promising. Give you 10 more seconds. Brothers, if it doesn't work after 40 days, Go back to your old ways. But it, it will change you because it's not me promising. Allah promises it. We change the affairs. There's people who, they tried to kill the Prophet. Allah says, just tell them to ask for forgiveness. We'll change them. They did and all of their lives changed. It's in the Quran. These were people that tried to kill the Prophet. What about you or me? Hajj in the back. One of the brothers in the back. What are you going to promise to do? Somebody. Come on. You know, if your kids were in this stage, you'd wish they'd w raise their hand. <laughs> Go ahead. You're going to eat healthy, but wh what's one way you're going to implement the Holy Quran in your life? Good. You can follow the diet of the Quran. Sisters, how are you going to start reading the Quran more? Go ahead. Yeah. Listen to us. In the morning, you're going to start your day with the Holy Quran. And if before I do anything else, make a promise. So here's a secret in the Holy Quran, and we'll end. In Surah An-Nur, it says, Surely I speak to the public, I speak to them in secret. Then I said, ask for forgiveness. You were harsh to your wife today? Ask for forgiveness. You raised your voice today? Ask for forgiveness. You had a bad thought about somebody? Ask for forgiveness. It's in the Quran. It says, ask for forgiveness, Allah is most forgiving. Now look at the next ayah. When you ask for forgiveness, Allah says, He will send down upon you a cloud pouring down of abundance. He will give you abundance. How? What's the secret? Forgiveness. Did the prophets of God ever ask forgiveness from people? No. Not one ayah. Who did they ask forgiveness from? Allah, even though they didn't make a mistake. But every time we sin, a reality, we go to a lower frequency and our life isn't not where it's supposed to be. Why did it be taken that way? Because you sin. Sinning isn't about heaven or hell. Sinning is about changing your life. Every time you sin, you go away from Allah and then you get a picture you're not going to be happy with. And the more you sin, the less likely you're going to change. 
So Allah says, we give you abundance after you ask for forgiveness. We help you with wealth, sons, make you gardens, make you rivers. Allah says, what's the matter with you? You want abundance? You want marriage? You want kids? You want wealth? Ask for forgiveness. Here, it's in the Quran. So guess what we're going to do in the next for two minutes. I want you to give me your best for two minutes. Tell the person next to you, you're going to give me give your best. Go. You're going to do it for Imam Ali. These are the words of Imam Ali. Go. Tell the person next to you, you're going to give me your best. You're going to give me your attention for the next two minutes. What we're going to do, and then we'll end. I'm going to ask, don't do it yet. I'm going to ask everybody to take a deep breath. This is the only way to speak to Allah. Is you can't be thinking about the cars outside or donuts or eating pizza or my back hurts. And every time your mind goes away, just come back to the present moment. That's how you know meditation is working when you catch your mind wandering. When's the last time you prayed and only thought about the prayer and nothing else? I feel sad for people. We're all, you know what's the biggest addiction out there? Thinking. Think about how many times your mind wandered while I was speaking today. If we looked at it, we, were able, we, it, we call you mad. We're all become mad. We can't sit still and think and focus. We become madmen. So what I want you to do is take this moment. There's nowhere you need to be. Allah has put you here for this moment right now. Don't be in a rush to go anywhere. Shut off your phone. Don't do anything. Don't look at it. Nothing. What I want you to do is now connect with Allah. So we're going to take a deep breath and then I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and then we're going to follow the words of Imam Ali. Salawat. Salawat. Everybody do this. Let's become one. Don't think, don't be too proud of yourself to ask for forgiveness. We all need to. Shaitan didn't ask for forgiveness. We're not like Shaitan. We're the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Take a deep breath. Let it all out. And close your eyes. And just let go. Everybody close their eyes, please. Everybody. Ya Nuru, Ya Kudus, O Light, O Aholi, O first of those who are first, <clears throat> O last of those who are last, O oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that tear apart my safeguard, that took me away from you. Forgive me for my sins, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that drawn down adversities that took me away from you. Forgive me, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that altered my blessings, that made me forget you and brought bala. O oh Allah, forgive me for those sins. Oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that hold me back from prayer, from supplication, from dua. Forgive me, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that cut down my hopes, that make me forget about you. Forgive me for those sins, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me for every sin I have committed and every mistake I have made, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me for this specific sin. Now speak to Allah of a sin and make a promise that you'll never do it again. With the reality, He'll give you something new. Speak to Allah. We have a talking God. Speak to Him. What's a sin? You're no longer... Do you get angry? Do you get upset? Do you watch haram? Do you have a bad relationship? Do you speak bad to your kids? Ask Allah for forgiveness and to help you with the sin. Make a promise, you'll never do it again, and to help uh, Allah help you. Oh Allah, I seek nearness only to you, and I seek intercession from you with yourself. And I seek through you, your munificence, for you to bring me closer to you, oh Allah. For that's the only reason I'm on earth, is to get closer to you. Salawat. Thank you. As you can tell, this is my life's journey. I'm going to get as many people as I can to break the habit of being themselves so they can create new habits of connecting to Allah. And I'm blown away with the results that we've been getting from youth to people with cancer to marriages 
to kids with bad grades. We had one student who had 88 missing assignments. She came six months later as on the honor roll. Did she just change her destiny? Yes or no? Why? Because she changed. And I love that. But it's all Allah. So I want you to think, what's one way you're going to implement the Quran with a new habit? And the five closest people in your life, make sure they look forward to seeing you every day. And if they don't, then there's something wrong with you. Don't blame them. You change. And Allah will change them. I promise you. Inshallah, if there's time, we'll do a bonfire, I guess, and we'll do a Q&A. If you have any questions, trust me, I said some things that are out there. Question me. Tell me, prove this. How do you know? And I love those. There's no taboo question out there. So thank you. Sorry I went a little bit longer. Let's just love each other enough to do the work. This community needs help. It's grumpy. It's trying to wake up. It's been sleeping for a long time. And when you've been sleeping for a long time, you wake up grumpy. So there's a lot of extremes going on. The only thing we need is this book, the Holy Quran, nothing else. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum.